So tell me, you you have a story about an incident that happened to you more than 20 years ago involving the Orlando Police Department that really kind of threw your life into a spin. It's something you've been wanting to tell the story for a long time. What is that story? Well, it all started uh, when I was, um, I was 15 at the time, there in 1994. And we came here to go to the arcade that was on Church Street mm -hmm. um, at the exchange. We, uh, when we were here, we, it was about five of us in one car. We all went to the exchange. We all kind of scattered. Three of us went back to the car and we were waiting for the so other where two. Was this car? This car is parked right here on South Street and Orange Avenue. So right where that building is right there, or the portable, yeah. is right where the parking lot was at. Gotcha, okay. And uh, so we went to the back to the car to wait for the other two guys to come back with us so we can go home. Um, another car pulled up at the time and pulled into the parking lot. And this car had maybe four or five guys that I didn't know. Um, but the guys that, I was, that was with me, they knew those guys. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know them. Uh, we turned on the music, or they turned on the music, and we were listening to some reggae dance hall music. And we were doing a dance called the Bogle at the time. It's where you make a gesture and you kind of do that kind of thing. That was kind of like the, the, the dance move that we were doing, a popular thing. Um, next thing you know, um, about 10 different police officers jumped out and had guns drawn in our face, pulled in my face and told me to get down on the ground immediately, screaming, put your hands up, get on the ground. And when, they, when I put my hands up, I immediately got down on the ground and they kept saying, where's the gun? And we're like, we didn't know what he was talking about. There's no gun. So my friend Leland was dancing with a little cap gun, which was a fake gun that had an orange tip on it. I mean, how big was this? It was probably three inches, if that, maybe about that big. Okay. Um, and it was pretty dark too as well. So as we were dancing, and uh, I did have the cap gun in my hand, but I handed that back to Leland. And when the officers were on the ground, we were on the ground, you know, they were walking around us. I was on the ground for about probably five minutes. They were looking for a gun. And they found a gun that was nowhere near me, but it was by some vehicle. And next thing you know, I hear the words that said, uh, well, whose gun is it? And I heard an officer t and I saw a flashlight come on my head. And he said, that's his gun. And I immediately jumped up and they grabbed me and put me in cuffs and I'm screaming, resisting, like, that's not my gun, that's not my gun. You check the fingerprints, look for the fingerprints, that's not my gun. And they didn't check the fingerprints. The cop just put the gun in his bare hands and put it in an evidence bag and they took me off to jail. Wow, yeah. so now what happened after that? Well, I go to jail juvenile for, um, for a week and, and that was a, a, a you know, traumatic experience being locked up with people that were in jail for murder and um, just, it, it just really turned me into something that I didn't want to be, but I had, I didn't want to be victimized. So you ever been in trouble before? I never been to jail. I never got arrested. I didn't, I never, my parents, my dad is retired um, master chief uh, in the Navy. My mom was a uh, teacher's aide at Evans High School. So my parents were there and I, you know, I didn't have no criminal record at all. This was all new to me. You know, I, I didn't grow up with a, family full, that was in prison and stuff like that. This was all new, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so I, I go to the juvenile, I get out a week later, and then I find out that the gun belonged to a kid that went to uh, West Orange by the name of Kiel, uh, Kiel McSwain. His mother was Mrs. McSwain. She was a teacher at, at West Orange High School. And, um, you know, and, and the story kind of starts from there. So I've talked to Philip probably a dozen times by now, and he insists that the night of this incident, he said that he didn't have any gun. He, he didn't own any kind of gun. Well, what's the real story there? Who, who had a gun? Well, Philip didn't have a gun at all. It was me. I had the gun in my possession. And when the police came up, I threw the gun underneath a, a car or a truck or something. And then no one claimed the gun. So the police said, you know what? Since no one wants to claim a gun, you're going to jail for it. And they took Philip to jail for it. And then, you know, I told my mother about the story and everything, and she wrote a letter, you know, to the judge stating what I stated to her because I was underage at that time. So, you know, she stated what I stated to her, and then we both went to court, you know, and told the judge, you know, what the truth was, that I had the gun. Philip never had the possession of the gun. If they had done, you know, proper forensics, you know, they would have shown that it wasn't Philip's fingerprints on the gun. They were my fingerprints on the gun. And, you know, and it's just, that's what happened, you know, and he just got, he got stuck with that because 
of improper police work. So when you heard about this situation with Philip being arrested for all things, being in possession of a firearm with the serial number filed off and stuff like that, did that sound like the Philip you know? Uh, no, sir. Why, why do no, you say sir. that? Because I, I was a disciplinarian with him and, and I took him to the shopping center that day and, and I dropped him off and, and he, the, he, I think he caught the bus or went down with his friends and then, mm -hmm. and down there, yes, downtown Orlando. So up to that time, how was Philip doing in school and at home and stuff like that? He, he was good at home and he, he would wasn't doing his best in school, but but he was passing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then he made the honor roll for a while, and I bought him a new Honda. And right, yes, sir. So, because my wife worked at that school out there. Mm -hmm. So you so you get a, I guess you get a call that he's been arrested. What what went through your mind as a parent? Not Philip. It, it couldn't be, right? And he convinced me. You know, you know uh, that it wasn't him. And the scenario he described is it impossible for an individual to see in the dark over a hundred feet. Philip was selected because of his height. I think he was much taller than the other kids with him. So that's maybe why the police officer kind of focused on him or you know, picked him out of the crowd. Yes, sir. I believe so. So what did it take to get him? Because I think he told me he had to go to juvenile detention and stuff like that. I mean, what was? He, he, he did, and I went down there, and uh, and and they released him in my custody. So immediately after you heard what happened, and he told you the story. What what did you do as a parent to respond to this this charge? I tried to get a, uh, a lawyer, mm -hmm. and, and since then she's left town. And, yes, I, and I hired a lawyer. And so, so he went to court and everything, but he he still was found guilty of this charge. Guilty. The state's attorney wanted to make an agreement with me, right? She'll drop one case and he plead guilty. And and we, we said no, because we knew he was innocent. And then so then he so then he, he got Yes, yeah, so he's found guilty. They put these different conditions on him and all the kind of stuff like that. Yes, it ruined his record, right? And even today, it it, it kind of limited his employment, particularly with the U.S. government. So, how did this actually affect your life? You get arrested. What what, what what happened? Well, I get arrested for something I didn't do. I get total anxiety being around police officers because I can't, I couldn't trust anyone, especially a police officer. Um, knowing that they lied on me on a police report uh, just to get me convicted. And it, it caused a lot of you know, mental anguish, a lot of stress um, that I still deal with today. Mm -hmm. how, so what, how did your parents respond to all this? So we hired uh, an attorney and the attorney that we hired, she misrepresented me by not subpoenaing or bringing in a kill. Um, because we told the attorney who this gun belonged to and I didn't know this person at the time and my attorney never uh, brought him into court so when we went to court uh, the only thing that happened was my attorney only questioned the officers mm -hmm. and the state attorney had the officers word and the police report to support and the judge ruled in the police officers favor Wow. So beyond like the actual court case, how did that affect you? Like what, what, what happened to you? Well, you know, I, I just, I pretty, I pretty much lost touch of reality of what was right, what was wrong. Um, I got arrested more times. Um, you know, it lasted probably six years of, 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 of me rebelling. Um, my parents, you know, spent well over $20,000 trying to appeal it and losing every single time. Um, I, I, I got stressed, I handled things incorrectly, I got in more legal trouble, been in and out of jail. Um, and that, that So how did you how did you finally kind of write yourself? Well you know when I was uh it took till I was about twenty three years old and the birth of my daughter. My daughter was born when I was twenty. Um, it, it I wised up. My mother died in a violent motorcycle accident and that helped change me, you know, want to do better things. What does the Orlando Police Department have to say about all this? Well, we asked them. 
And here's what they said. We take all allegations of untruthfulness seriously. Based on our evaluation, your allegations that an officer lied in the police report are completely unfounded. We will point out to you that the video you produced and provided a link to in which Mr. Warren talks to you on camera about holding a gun in his hand during the incident that led to his arrest. So, you heard Philip say that he had a toy gun that night that he gave back to one of his friends, but he did not possess a real gun. And in fact, the real gun and the toy gun were taken into custody. The police never explained why they didn't fingerprint the real gun, which would have proved Philip's case and cleared him of the charges. Why does this concern you so much? This concerns me so much because the fact that I know that this officer put an innocent child and I could have easily systematically winded up in prison, it affected me for the rest of my life. I have very small trust in police officers and the way they conduct the investigations, the way they handle the youth, whether it be black or white. I have very, a lot of distrust in what they do. And I want this officer, since he took an oath to work for the city of Orlando, that he needs to be answered to these questions and, and, and tell the truth.